I understand that there was significant breakup in my earlier message on Facebook uh, live, and um, I'm going to try this again using the camera on my computer, which I'll then post. I hope this will work. Um, please um, bear with me as I try uh, all this new um, technology that I've not been accustomed to using. My post began this way. A couple years ago, my mom sent me home from Atlanta with um, a box of memorabilia that she had been putting aside for me over the years. Um, I promptly put the box on a shelf upstairs in the closet and frankly forgot about it until this morning. But during this time of social distancing, my husband David has been encouraging me to clear out some of the clutter in that closet. And so this morning, I um, took a walk down memory lane. In that box mom sent me home with, I found my birth certificate from Corinth, Mississippi, hair clippings from age two and nine and 12. I was a natural blonde. There was schoolwork and report cards beginning from first grade all the way through high school. There was programs from every piano recital I ever played, news clippings from musical dramas I was cast in. What a beautiful gift to me. Thank you, Mom. But what I want to share with you in particular is a letter my dad wrote in his own hand. Now understand, I come from a long line of Methodist preachers. I understand that my great-great-great-grandfather was a primitive Methodist preacher. I have a picture on the credenza in my office at the church. This particular letter was from February 1991 from my dad, and let me show you a picture of it. Dad was then the um, professor of evangelism, uh, evangelism and the founding director of the World Methodist Institute for Evangelism at Candler Seminary, uh, located in uh, Emory University. Dad sent me this letter as a gift of agape love when I took my walk to Emmaus, and I want to share it with you now. I hope I can do it without too many tears. He first tells me that he and mom are on the way to Frakes, Kentucky, where he's going to be teaching the App Appalachian Lay Pastor School. Dad traveled a lot all over the world, um, but he was really good about being in contact with the family. And then he writes, I, it was so gratifying to watch the per per powerful work of God in your life. I would be less than honest if I failed to say I am not surprised. From the time you were a child, I have always felt that you would that you possessed gifts and graces for ministry. Moreover, I have always believed that God would lead you into a full-time church-related vocation. I did my best not to be pushy, believing that it was best to simply hold back commit you to God and continue to pray. God has a rich and exciting ministry in store for you. There will be tough times, especially during your seminary career, but God will see you through. To my mind, the key to ministry is surrender. By surrender, I do not mean passivity, nor do I mean dedication. I mean surrender. In dedication, you still have your hands on the gift. In surrender, you let go. The gift doesn't belong to you anymore. It totally and wholly belongs to God. Just as the canvas surrenders to the painter, the violin to the musician, so you put yourself at the disposal of God. This surrender is the source of power and insists that in order to discover this power, you do not attempt to cultivate it with the self, which often amounts to asserting the self as divine, but forthrightly sur surrender the self to God. The attitude is receptivity to God instead of asserting of self. The paradox of grace is marvelous. 
The result of self-surrender is not to become selfless. To the contrary, the self is affirmed, a heightened personality, more whole and wholesome. Forgive my preaching, honey, but there is music to my madness. I know perfectly well that Emmaus will not be an occasion of a conversion experience for you. For you, that process began, began some time ago. However, it occurs to me that your Emmaus walk could become a time of surrender, complete surrender. Complete surrender means complete fulfillment. For God's will is our way, the way we were created to be and to live. Make the surrender once and for all, and yet continuous. This is not contradictory. Surrender in marriage is once and for all, but it must be done or re renewed daily. It was Paul who said, I have been crucified with Christ, but he also said, I die daily. The surrender we make to God is done and yet never done. It is final, yet forever unfolding. Surrender is the key to ministry. I love you, and I'm so very proud of you. My heart rejoices to see the tremendous ministry team that you and Dave are becoming. This is a miracle of divine grace. And boy, that's true. I will be praying for you, your loving dad. And there's his signature. Thank you for allowing me to share that special gift with you. Dad was referring to two scriptures in his letter. First, um, and both of them were um, uh, letters from the Apostle Paul. First, Galatians 2, 19b to 20, which reads, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The second scripture is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 30 and 31, which reads, And why are we putting ourselves in danger every hour? I die every day. That is as certain brothers and sisters as my boasting of you, a boast that I make in Christ Jesus our Lord. I used to imagine my father had the entire Bible memorized. He ate drank, and breathed Holy Scripture. Sadly, my father suffers from dementia, which has been stealing for him from us bit by bit for 10 years now. But even as his mind grows more feeble, his love for God and for his family continues to be strong. And I will forever be grateful he shared his faith in Christ with us. It is our priceless treasure. And that's my point this morning. I want to invite you to reflect today on your own loved ones, children, grandchildren, spouses, family, friend, neighbors, co-workers. Have you yet shared your love for Jesus with the people you love? How are you intentionally nurturing the faith in them? And what gifts, skills, Talents, abilities, do you recognize in the people that you love? They may never be called to ministry as a vocation, as I have been, but all who love Christ are called and gifted to serve Christ. Friends, as we are faced with this time of social distancing, which is a time of abrupt change and uh, certainly a change in the rhythm and activity of our daily lives, perhaps now is an opportunity for you to write a letter, make a phone call, tell your faith story to someone you love. Let us pray together. We thank you, O oh God, for the people who love you and who have loved us enough to share their faith with us. Help us to find ways in, uh, in ways that are authentic to who we are to share our faith story. And let that be a treasure to the people that we love. 
This we ask and pray for the sake of Christ. Amen.